Hi, this is Simon Obstel. I hope you're all safe and well, and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today we're going to be taking a look at this 3D glow effect. So the overall concept of how this is done is probably not going to come as a complete surprise to many of you, but hopefully you'll gain something from the details of how I actually went about it. So first of all, let's look at our project setup. As usual, I'm using 1920, 1080, 24 frames a second, 10 seconds long. So let's first of all set up the background wall for our scene. And to do that, I'm going to come and import this texture called Cement JPEG. Now I'm going to put a download link for these elements in the comments for you. Okay, so import that. So we're going to take this group and we're going to set it to fixed resolution. And we're going to set it to 8000 by 8000. And then we're going to come to filters and we're going to look for tiling and collider tile. And because my cement element is 1920-1080, I'm going to use that as the width and height for the collider tile, so it all mirrors up perfectly. 1920-1080. Then I'm going to make a new group, and I'm going to put this group into it. And let's add a camera to see what we've done. So add a camera. Let's not switch to 3D, keep us 2D, because I just want to make this enclosing group 3D, not, not the one inside it. And then if we come to our camera, you'll see we've got this nice big floor and our cement element has been tiled up using mirroring. And that's gonna give us a nice lot of room to play with. So let's just temporarily turn off our camera and I'm going to make another group, object new group. Don't want this to be 3D. And I'm going to import my shape that I'm going to be using for this project. So abstract Lego shape, import that. And it looks like this. And it's nice and large. So you'll see the scale has been automatically scaled down to about 30%. And it really does need to be large. This is roughly 4,000 pixels square. And given that we're going to be going close into it, you want to make sure your source object is at least that big. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this group a logo source. And then I'm going to make a clone of it. Right click, make clone layer. And I'm going to drag that clone into that original group that we made, delete this group that was made during that process. And I'm going to turn off the logo source. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to colorize this. So I'm going to do that by coming to stylize fill. So I want to go for something that's a little bit yellow, something like this. And while we're at it, I'm also going to colorize my floor element. So I'm going to select that cement and come to color, colorize, set the black to complete black and the remap white, let's come down to the opposite direction and let's make it nice and dark, I think. So then let's come back to our clone layer and I want to duplicate it. So right click duplicate and I'm going to delete that fill and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a replicator from this. So object replicate. And we're going to switch it to 3D. We're going to select line. We're going to zero out the X values there. We're going to open up the start point and we're going to set that Z value to 75. While I'm at it, I'm just going to come down and switch on additive blend. It's very important to do that. Let's just quickly turn our camera back on so you can see what I've done. It's that old trick of using a replicator to simulate a 3D object. So obviously we need quite a few more slices here. So I'm going to up that points to about 32. And we do have a problem that we do see the slices when they're end on, but we're going to take care of that shortly. So what we need to do is come down to the color mode and select over pattern open up the gradient. And I think I want to go for a kind of orangey color at the base. You can see that. 
And this one at the top, I'm just going to go slightly more yellow like that. And you can see the additive blend mode is giving us this really nice sort of luminous effect to, to it already. So the next thing we want to do is select the replicator and come to Filters, Blur and Gaussian Blur. And this is going to create the basis of our glow. So we're going to go for something like 24 there. And you can see it's just softened everything off. And it's also helped to disguise any slices that we might still be able to see. If we're still worried about it, we can even go to 32. That's probably even better. The more, we, the more blur we add, in fact, the more transparent it becomes. And that's actually quite nice too. So I'm going to select my colored clone layer and I'm going to duplicate that. Right click, duplicate. And then I'm going to move it up above our glowing element here. And I'm going to come to its position and set that Z position to 75. So now it's got a, it's, now it's a face sitting on top of our 3D glow. And I just want to change this fill color. And again, let's go for the opposite direction and make it nice and dark. Dark and desaturated, something like that. I'm just going to take this opportunity to do a bit of tidy up. I'm going to call this group main. And this replicator, let's call glow. So let's call this, this bottom one here, let's call floor glow. Let's call this face. And this bottom group here, let's call it wall. Okay, that's starting to be a bit tidier. So let's make this look a little bit more interesting by adding some lights. So add object light and, and immediately you'll see our glow has lost its punch. So what we need to do is we need to change some of these elements lighting status. So I'm going to select my floor glow there, open up the lighting and turn it off. And the same for our replicator glow, turn that off. And you see we're back to, to normal, but the rest of the scene is being illuminated by that light. Just going to move that light position up to 150. And then I'm going to reduce its intensity down to about 60. Then I'm going to duplicate it and I'm just going to move it out to the top left. So negative 400 on X and positive 400 on Y. Duplicate it again and I'm going to move it to the bottom right hand corner. So positive 400 on X and negative 400 on Y. So now it's looking a little bit better. This is what we've got. Those lights are lighting up just enough. So I'm just going to turn off some of these 3D overlays. That grid is annoying me. And I'm also going to turn off the scene icons, which are the lights and just gives us a, a little bit more of a sense of what we're doing here. Okay, so next, I think I just want to adjust that cement colorize. It's a little bit too dark. So we can just bring it up just a little bit. So we're getting a little bit more sense of that floor there. I think that'll be better. Okay, so one thing I want to do here is to use that same floor texture as the face for this top edge here, or rather add it to that face. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that, come up to my face layer here and then paste. So that's on top. And then what we'll need to do is we'll need to cut it out and we can cut it out using that face element. So I'm going to right click on the cement, add image mask, and then I'm going to use that face as the source and then turn the face back on again. Now we need to move this cement up to the same level. First of all, we need to reset its position because that's been affected by the camera. And then we need to move it to 75 pixels on Z. Now, what I want to try is I want to have the effect of the face being a little bit see-through, and I think this is going to be really nice. So what we're going to do is we're going to set the blend mode of this cement layer to multiply. We're going to come down to the face layer, and we're going to set its opacity down to 96. And already you can see how that's become a little bit see-through. You can see we're seeing through to the underlying structure, and that's that's really rather nice, I think. So I'm going to remove that colorize from the cement layer. I'm going to add hue saturation and also a levels. So with the hue saturation, I'm going to reduce the saturation down to negative one, so we've got no saturation. 
And then that allows me to use this really just as a texture. And I'm going to use the levels to start to give the effect I want. And I think you can see now that I can just get a nice patchy effect, patchy see-through effect. And I think that looks really oh, a whole lot better, having added in this texture that is, that is semi-see-through. And we're seeing through to the lighting effect and the structure underneath. And, and that's, that's really rather good, I think. So let me just turn off the camera for one second. And if we look at the overall scene, I think you'll agree that what we need is the, for the glow to be appearing to cast a little bit of lighting onto the floor. So I'm going to do that using this floor glow element. I probably shouldn't have called that floor glow because I'm going to use it again for an actual glow, but let's duplicate it, right click duplicate. And so this bottom layer here, I'm going to come to filters and apply a nice big Gaussian blur. So we're going to go for something like 400. And then what we can do is just reduce this level down quite a long way. I'm around sort of 20, 15, 20% there. And if I toggle that on and off, you can see how much better that looks. That really looks as though the glow is kicking out light onto the floor that's, or the wall rather, that's surrounding it. Now, let me just turn the camera back on again and let's consider another issue. And that's that really what we ought to be seeing is some glow that overlaps the edges of the face, which is what would happen in the real world. So the way I would do it is to select that main group and come to filters. And I would use our very own Hawaii super glow. And that instantly gives a very dramatic effect, way too dramatic. But what I'm going to do is increase the threshold, reduce the amount. And you can see we've got this really gorgeous glow that's very, very controllable and looks super photorealistic. And there's heaps of other controls that make this a really fancy plugin. But obviously you want to know how to build all this using only the motion tool set. So I'm going to delete that. And what we're going to do is we're going to duplicate this entire main group. So I'm going to do right click duplicate. I'm going to call this new group glow. And then let's just open it up. We don't need everything in it in actual fact. So I'm going to delete my wall. I'm going to delete these two floor glows. So we're really just interested in the replicator and the face element. In fact, I'm going to remove that cement element there and I'm going to make the face element fully opaque because really I want to use it as a mask for the, the, the light source. I'm going to use that fill just to make that black. So now if we turn off our main, you can see we've isolated the glow source and now we can use this group as our glow. So what I'm going to do is set its blend mode to add. Let's turn our main back on again. And then I'm going to add blur, Gaussian blur. And I'm going to increase this amount to something like 16. And then I'm going to duplicate it, right click duplicate, increase the amount to up to about 64. Duplicate it again, click duplicate, increase the amount up to Let's go for 256. Now, this is all much too strong. So what we're going to do is we're going to progressively reduce these mix values. So this top one is going to be 10%, this one 20%, and this one 30%. So now we've got a pretty decent glow, really. And we can adjust the overall amount using the, the opacity of this glow group. So I'm going to set it to around 50%, I think. Now, because our glow group is adding so much extra brightness, we're losing a little bit of the subtlety of the internal glow here. All looks a little bit solid rather than this kind of see-through effect that I would like. So to fix that, I'm going to come into our main group and select the replicated glow, and I'm going to reduce this opacity down to around 20. And that's just introduced a little bit more, if I put it back up again, you can see in areas like this, we've got that kind of more interesting transparency on the bottom there. Let's go for 20 actually on there. And that's going to look a lot nicer, I think. 
can see that effect here. And now we've added that overall glow, I think our floor glow needs to be a little bit more intense. So let's come down to that. Let's increase that value, let's see how we go. Yeah, 35 is probably about right, given the intensity of, of that light. I think that's fairly good. So I realize you might well want to change the color of this. And let's just have a go at doing that. I'm going to make a new group and I'm going to call this background, BG for background. I'm going to take that wall group there and drag it out into that new group and put that new group right at the back. So now we've isolated the wall. And what we can do is make an, an additional new group. And then we can put both the glow and the main groups into it. And then we can add filters, color, hue, saturation. And then our hue control allows us to pick the color of our choice. And we can also use the value just to bring it all under control a bit because obviously different different cues are going to have different luminance values and you might want to just keep them under control a little bit with the value. So now we've got everything set up, we can very easily swap out the image source. So we can come to our logo source group. I'm just going to turn off the original logo shape and I'm going to come to import and I'm going to import an alternative logo shape. So import that and as you see everything works just fine. All we've had to do is just swap out the, the shape within that group. Now we can also use the motion title tool. So we could type some text into this group here. I'm going to type 3D. We need to make it really big. So I'm going to make it 1200. Bring it down accordingly. So negative 400. And let's just hide our original logo source. And you can see that that kind of pretty much works just as well. Now the issue though is that with this process, if you're using the text tool with certain fonts at certain camera angles, you can get really, really unacceptable artifacts, rendering artifacts. I mean, seriously, very, very ugly and you can't live with them. And I think I would probably recommend that you render out the text that you want bring it back in as a nice large still and then you'll find it's all a lot easier to work with. So that would be my advice. So here's a little RAM preview. I've added in a little bit of dust particles which I always think help. You can see we've got that really nice transparency which are, to me that that's what makes the effect is we're seeing through the light source rather than it's a solid block. So I hope that's been interesting. Thanks very much indeed for watching and I hope to see you again another time.